Hello and welcome to Infinity. Um, very often taking a picture with cameras in certain conditions, you may find that you get white out where everything's rather burned or else everything's dark except for the bit that you want that's light. In other words, there's a very high dynamic range, which is basically too much for the sensor. Your eye and your brain are good at sorting out the shadows and highlights, but you need the camera to do more than it currently can do. So what you do is you take multiple photographs and you take them from dark to light and let's have a look at an example. And here we've got five photographs I took here from very dark to very light. Open these. It'll open them all at once in one in each tab. And they're not quite in the order. I think they took them from a different order, but there we go. Let's start from the darkest here and see with a dark picture. Most of the things are dark, but you can see things like the filaments in the bulb and what's outside. And then we go from 37 to 38. That's the normal picture you take. So when you're doing this, you're going from underexposed to overexposed. If you've got exposure compensation, plus or minus, start with the minus one and so on. If you can do it automatically, all the better. And with your camera, make sure that you're on aperture priority. And if you want high depth of focus all the way through, make sure that's a high number like 16 or 18 or something like that, or even 22. So here we go. We're on 39. 40 gets lighter again. So we're getting more detail down here. And 41. We've got little blobs here. This is from the camera lens, which was not terribly clean. Never mind. We can clean those up afterwards in Affinity Photo. But let's get rid of these now. And we're going to do a proper HDR. We're using, using those. So I go File, New HDR, Merge, Add. I normally take in the raw mode, but I can use JP, JPEGs here because it's simply going to be quicker, but you get a lot of the detail and you show that it can happen. As this is a basic video, I'm not going to worry about any of the things down there, just accept the default and I'll say OK to that. This takes a little while, so I'm just going to skip forward and it's just showing you what it's doing along the way. And so here we end up here. We go to the tone mapping persona up here. And when we're done, we can just hit apply and it'll go back to the photo persona. But we've got presets here and these are often quite handy. We start off, this is the natural one. And we've already got here, you can see the details outside the window and the detail in the bulbs there. And you also got the dark that was down here. So you can try these and see what they do. Um, so there's, for example, a detailed one. You can do a high contrast, black and white, dramatic and so on. You've also go down here. You've got other ones here which go even more wild. I often use a detail one. I just quite like the amount of detail here that doesn't go too far. But the two controls you've got in here, which are the most useful, are these two is tone compression and local contrast. Let's turn them all the way down and then we'll see what happens as they turn up. We've also got this clap clamp to SDR. SDR stands for standard dynamic range as opposed to high dynamic range. If you're getting some problems of things appearing weird, you can try clipping that. I've never had need to use it. So I'm going to zoom into here. And here we can see as we start off here, it's a little bit burnt out outside. It's so much brighter outside than it is in. If I turn up the tone compression, what I'm doing is squeezing that sort of outer range data so it actually appears in range. So now we can see more there of, of what's outside. So that pulls details in from that. If you also look wider up here, taking that down here as well. So when that's the bottom, it's all rather dark down here. So it pulls up the darks and pulls down the lights and pulls details you don't see otherwise. So it's really handy. The local contrast, if I turn this up, look at what's happening here. And if I get that up there, so outside it looks, you know, there's a bit more detail perhaps, but inside, look at what's happened. Watch this wall. See the dark bit there and the light a bit up there. When I turn that down, 
you know, and it, that, turn that up. It shows you what it's doing. It's, it's, in other words, it's seeing with this light and this dark near one another, and it's kind of making them more extreme. This gives you the kind of classic HDR effect. In this image, it looks a little bit on the grimy side. It turns it into a, you know, looks like it's not been painted recently, which in fact I know this room had been painted. But you get this sort of extreme effect, which sometimes works if you're taking, for example, pictures of decay and so on. So I'm often very careful about this. I'll often use tone compression, but the thing to do is just play with those two controls. All the rest down here you can get in the photo persona, and I use those there. So you pick one of these, play a bit with these, and then hit apply. And then it'll do this tone mapping, it's run the magic on the original picture. You end up with a single pixel layer here, and here you've got it. Your detail down here, and then you can see what's up there. And then you can go into things like go to your in painting brush and start painting out those areas here. That's got a little bit on the grotty side. There we are, clean it up, clean up little flecks that are going into the wrong place, and so on. So there you go. You can get a lot more detail in. The presets help you get to quite interesting effects. Or you can go and control things. Tone mapping and local contrast are the key ones to play with. Everything else I do back in the photo persona. Anyway, there we go. And hope that was helpful. And thank you very much for watching.